Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. Volatility continues to plague the last street. The Sensex and the Nifty end flat, erasing their intraday gains. Mid-caps managed to buck the trend today. India sees record petrol and diesel consumption in FI24. As per a report by the Union Petroleum Ministry, the ministry cites buoyant vehicle sales, adding that electric vehicle sales are still finding lower traction and account for less than 7% of the total registered vehicles. Fresh turbulence for the Tata Group. More than 70 Air India Express flights stand cancelled after a section of the cabin crew call in sick at the last minute. The airline says it's engaging with disgruntled crew members. The BJP government in Haryana is on the brink. Dushan Chautala's JJP announces support to the Congress party if it decides to topple the state government. This comes a day after three independent MLAs withdrew their support to the BJP and backed the Congress. The United States pauses shipments of weapons to Israel as it begins to attack the crowded city of Rafah in Gaza. The UN warns that a full-scale invasion of Rafah will be a humanitarian nightmare. AstraZeneca withdraws its COVID-19 vaccine globally, citing surplus availability of newer vaccines. The move comes a day after the European Commission withdrew its marketing authorization of the company's request. The Google Wallet comes to India. The company says the digital wallet will allow users to store airline boarding passes, travel tickets, movie tickets, parking receipts and passes for other events. Apple unveils a new range of tablets at an event in London, releases the thinnest new iPad Pro and a redesigned iPad Air. Both products will be available from the 15th of May. Well, let's start with the day's market action. The markets are raising their intraday gains today. We saw a fair degree of volatility. The Nifty and the Sensex ending the day flat. Bank stocks dragged the markets lower. Mid-caps did outperform today. That's the Nifty uh, closing unchanged. The Sensex down by about 45 points. The Nifty Bank losing half a percent. The Nifty Mid-cap, as we pointed out, closing in the green today. Prashant joins us now with the market action. Prashant, uh, what's the mood check at this point in time? An extremely volatile session is what you had today, this Wednesday. Uh, overnight queues this morning were absolutely quiet. Nothing at all uh, flattish, newsless and dataless as well. So you kind of started with a bit of a vacuum with no real tailwind or headwind in that sense. Uh, and the market, like what we saw over the last couple of days, started tentative and then went south. There was a big recovery, which we saw early on, almost about 200 points from the low to the high. But then there was another round of selling which came in in the second half of the day and we finally ended almost unchanged. Uh, so pretty similar, a very quiet session, masking a lot of volatility but quiet at the end of it. Now, a Bank Nifty up on your screen, there was a cut over a half a percent uh, loss there. Broader markets did a little better. They've been sort of, of course, selling off more than large caps for three sessions now and there was a bit of a recovery. Although they, here also, I mean, you know, late selling took a bite out of the gains. Large caps, uh, BPCL, Hero, Tata Motors, Power Grid, Hindalco were, uh, you know, some of the top gainers. On the downside, Dr. Reddy's lost uh, react, uh, reaction to earnings, Asian Paints and Grassim or some of the others which uh, lost out. In the broader market, lots of action. Uh, more volume-led gainers as compared to losers. Advanced decline was positive. So, REC was a big mover. Bharat Forge reported numbers. We spoke with the management, 15% higher. Hoodco, Century Textiles. There was something like a car trade, Crompton, Hindustan Zinc, Prestige Estates, Balaji Amins, Sterling Wilson Solar, Spark are a few of the names which saw really large gains. And there were stocks under pressure. Canada Bank reported numbers was down. Voltas has lost market share, uh, as uh, we saw from the numbers. JSW Energy earnings, Sonata Software earnings, Speedy Light and Jindal Saw were some of the others which actually went south in terms of trade. Uh, I mean, the market, of course has not been paying attention to what's been coming from the global market because last night there was nothing but over the last couple of days, global markets have been positive, but the reaction here has been very, very tepid to sideways. And I think uh, a lot of it has got to do with, of course, what's on its mind, which I think is politics and elections. Back to you. Well, politics and elections weighing on the markets as well. Prashant, many thanks for joining us. India's economic growth could touch 8% in FI24. That's according to the chief economic advisor to the government, Ananta Nageshwaran, speaking at an event this morning. Nageshwaran said India's economy can sustain a growth rate of more than 65 to 7% in the coming years. Take a look. Obviously, desired growth rate is what is the max whatever we can sustain. Uh, maximum possible growth rate, but we also need to be realistic about the geopolitical backdrop and the geoeconomic backdrop. 
and therefore more important than uh, aspiring for much higher growth rates it's important to maintain moderate to steady moderate to reasonably high growth but on a steady basis over a long period i think it's more important to have longer economic cycles than we have had in the past rather than looking for higher growth in the current circumstances moving those impediments such as uh, deregulating the uh, the compliances and the inspections we have at the local and state government level etc and continued investment in um, focus on skilling as well as the uh, health dimensions of our uh, young demography all those things will help us grow uh, at a steady rate of even maybe close to 7% and the more we address some of the uh, legacy issues it can even rise further based on domestic economy strengths well, that's the chief economic advisor. Now, India has witnessed record petrol and diesel consumption in FI24. This as per a report that's been put out by the Petroleum Ministry. Oil marketing companies have seen a growth rate of 6%. That's in the sale of petrol. The report also points out that electric vehicles are finding traction, but only account for 6 under 7%, just under 7% of total vehicles registered as things currently stand. Sapna standing by now with more. Sapna, take us through what the ministry is saying. Well, the Petroleum Ministry report does have some interesting insights. One, of course, the fact is that uh, both petrol and diesel consumption, uh, you know, have been extremely strong in the last couple of years. There is a strong uptake. Uh, petrol particularly uh, has been uh, showing a quantum jump in terms of uh, consumption. Uh, so if you look at the last financial year, uh, OMC sold around 37 uh, million metric ton of uh, petrol. And uh, the monthly average for petrol consumption is now over 3 MMT, uh, which which the report says very clearly is an all-time record. Uh, one of the reasons for this, of course, is that uh, vehicle ownership in India has grown many-fold and this is giving a big boost to your fuel sales. Uh, particularly if you look at the pas passenger vehicles, well, the registrations here were over 42 lakh in the last financial year. Over 60% of them were SUVs and uh, plus the EV penetration is very low. So this is one of the major reasons why the petrol sales have done extremely well. Similarly, in terms of diesel consumption, well, this has been over 90 MMT in the last financial year. The forecast for this year is around 92 MMT. Uh, this, of course, is on the back of economic activity. But uh, having said uh, having said that, the fact remains that even in the coming years, uh, the government does expect the petrol and diesel sales to, sales to be on the uptake uh, because of the economic momentum and also because of vehicle sales taking off in a big way and EV penetration still extremely low, at least for the moment. All right, Sapna, many thanks. Staying with the auto sector, where India's retail sector has achieved a 27% growth year-on-year year in April. This as per the data from the Federation of Automobile Dealers Association, which shows that passenger vehicle sales grew 16%. Meanwhile, two-wheeler sales also picked up pace, growing 33% year-on-year. However, commercial sales were up only 2% compared to April of last year. On to earnings corner, Hero Motor posting an inline Q4, meeting estimates on all parameters. Net profit up 18% year-on-year. Revenues grew 15%. The auto company's management has said it expects this year's new launches to drive its market share higher. Shares of Bharat Forge gained 8% after a strong Q4 performance, net profit up 60% year-on-year, while revenue rose 17%. The company attributed the strong numbers to the continued ramp-up of its export business across all segments. Bharat Forge's management also says the continued improvement in its overseas business will lead to strong profit growth in the next fiscal year. And on to aviation, where the Tata Group faces fresh turbulence after more than 70 Air India Express flights were cancelled today. In a statement, the airline has said a section of the cabin crew members called in sick at the last minute and the company is now engaging with the disgruntled crew members. There were chaotic scenes at several airports as hundreds of passengers were left stranded. Air India Express has also apologised to passengers for the cancellations. Danish reports from the Delhi airport and Neetu gets you more from the Trivandrum airport. Well, there is fresh turbulence for Tata Group owned airline Air India Express as the airline has cancelled over 70 flights across the country today as many cabin crew members reported sick late Tuesday evening. Well, as per the statement shared by the airline earlier in the day, the Air India Express management is in active talks with the cabin crew members to really understand what is the issue and why they went on a mass sick leave. Well, right now we are present at the Delhi airport to really understand what is the ongoing situation. As per the Delhi airport sources, there are only 14 flights impacted and you can also see on uh, the flight information uh, display board that uh, there is 
a certain number of flights that have been cancelled today and the various AI Express flights that are on time and the certain flights that have been delayed. So overall from the Delhi airport only 14 flights have been impacted, 7 departures and 7 arrivals have been impacted. But what is the reason why the employees have went uh, on a mass sick leave? Well as per sources the problem is not new and from the past 2-3 months there was this issue that cropped up inside the airline. Well Air India Express and Air Asia India are currently being merged into a single LCC and uh, it is being alleged by the Air India Express Union employees that the certain mismanagement that is happening within the airline, uh, they have also alleged uh, that the certain uh, cabin crew members of Air Asia India that are being preferred over uh, Air, Air, or Air India Express employees and hence uh, this is one of the reasons why have they have gone on a mass sick leave. Moreover, they have also said that there were certain crew members that were promised uh, calls for interviews but those uh, cabin crew members haven't received any call from the management and hence we are seeing uh, this issue uh, spiraling into a big problem for Air India Express. Moreover, the Ministry of Civil Aviation has also stepped in to address this crisis. They have asked Air India Express to submit a report on the entire crisis that is happening and how they really plan to address it. Moreover, uh, the Ministry of Civil Aviation has also directed Air India Express to ensure that when it comes to flight cancellations or delays, the passengers are being accommodated as per the DGCA rules. With video journalist Saroj Singh, this is Danish Anand for CNBC TV18. Many passengers of Air India Express has been stuck in various airports in Kerala. From late last night, there has been some cancellations and delays, uh, especially uh, flights which uh, are uh, to the Gulf countries. So in Tiruvananthapuram, in Kochi Airport and in Karipur Airport, there has been flight cancellations towards Sharjah, Oman, uh, and passengers are stuck here. The passengers that we spoke to say that they have not got yet got a confirmation on Air India on when they can travel next. Their flights was cancelled today but they don't have an idea when they can travel next. What they are being told is that either they will get a refund or in the next couple of days if there are cancellations in the other flights then uh, they will get tickets uh, on priority like that. So that is what uh, they have been told so far. Well, trouble for commuters as well as for Air India Express. Now, CNBC TV18 has accessed a letter that Air India Express Employees Union had written to Tata Sun's chairman N. Chandrasekharan. This was written on the 26th of April. The union had alleged that there was growing unrest and dissatisfaction among employees after the takeover by the Tata Group. The staff had alleged inequality in payroll and hiring, further claiming that they were mistreated and sidelined by new candidates. They alleged that essential allowances like HRA, DATA and DH, which were given prior to the merger, were now removed. Move. They also allege that AirAsia India employees are given permanent payroll while Air India Express staff were terminated without explanation. Global news, Israeli airstrikes continue to cripple Gaza, killing at least 27 people, including nine children in Rafah. Israeli defense minister said that military operation in the area will continue until Hamas is eliminated from the southern city and the entire Gaza Strip. The U.S. has paused the shipment of bombs to Israel amidst concerns over their potential use in Rafah. Meanwhile, the U.N. has warned that a full-scale invasion of Rafah will be a humanitarian nightmare. Protests across colleges in the U.S. continue even as student encampments were forced to shut in campuses, including the University of Chicago. Hundreds of students at UC Berkeley rallied in solidarity with Palestinians on the campus. Protests have also spread across universities in Europe. German police broke up a protest by several hundred pro-Palestinian activists who had occupied a courtyard at Berlin's Free University. Protesters occupied a university building in Amsterdam hours after the police detained 170 people at a different campus location. TikTok has filed a lawsuit against the U.S. government to stop the enforcement of a bill that forces the app's Chinese owner to sell it or have it banned. TikTok arguing that the act is an intrusion on the free speech rights of the company and its 170 million American users. The social media company also says that the Chinese government has made it clear it would not allow the disinvestment of TikTok. The European Union's Climate Change Monitoring Services said that the world has experienced the hottest April on record. This continues an 11-month streak of unprecedented high temperatures. The Climate Agency says that abnormally warm conditions have occurred despite the continued weakening of the El Nino weather phenomena that contributes to increased heat. Pharma major AstraZeneca has withdrawn its COVID vaccine globally, citing surplus availability of newer vaccines. Now, the decision comes a day after the European Commission withdrew its marketing approval to the vaccine 
on the company's request. In a statement, AstraZeneca said, and I quote, as multiple variant COVID-19 vaccines have since been developed, there is a surplus of available updated vaccines, adding that this has led to a decline in demand. The company went on to say, and I quote, According to independent estimates, over 6.5 million lives were saved in the first year of use alone and over 3 billion doses were supplied globally. End of quote. Ekta standing by with more on the story. Uh, Ekta, AstraZeneca basically saying that there is no demand for the vaccine any longer uh, and hence it is uh, withdrawing the vaccine from the market. In fact, back home, Serum Institute had decided to do so in 2021 itself. Global pharma company AstraZeneca has announced that the company has initiated the worldwide recall of its COVID-19 vaccine. The company has said the reason for the withdrawal of the COVID-19 vaccine globally is commercial, linking it mainly due to the decline in demand. The company stated that multiple variant COVID-19 vaccines have been developed and that there is a surplus of available updated vaccines. The withdrawal of the vaccine comes on the heels of AstraZeneca admitting in court documents that its COVID-19 vaccine developed along with the University of Oxford can cause a rare side effect, TTS or thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome. Lawyers have argued that the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine is quote-unquote defective and that its efficacy has been quote-unquote vastly overstated. AstraZeneca has strongly denied these claims. Currently, there are 51 cases filed against AstraZeneca in the UK on allegations of the side effects of the vaccine. When it comes to India, vaccine manufacturer Serum Institute of India produced AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine, Covishield. Remember, Covishield and Bharat Biotech's Covaxin were the two most commonly used COVID-19 vaccines in the country. Overwhelming majority of the population received Covishield compared to Covaxin. All right, Ekta, many thanks for joining us. Buy now, pay later. Fintech Simple has laid off at least 100 employees. This according to a money control report. The layoffs are part of the startup's cost-cutting measures to work towards profitability. This is the company's second round of layoffs for the second straight year, as around 160 to 170 employees were let go off in March last year. The Delhi High Court has quashed the show cause notices issued by the CBIC to solar power firms. Remember, the CBIC ruled that these companies were not eligible for the manufacturing and other operations and warehouse regulation scheme. However, the court terminated the order, saying that these firms came under the ambit of the scheme. Under the scheme, solar power developers importing panels and modules can avail the option to defer the payment of 44% customs duty and 12% GST till the equipment is put to use. We will head into a break, but up next, Apple unveils a new range of tablets at an event in London, releases the thinnest new iPad Pro and a redesigned iPad Air. More when we return. Prime Minister Modi has attacked Rahul Gandhi and the Congress party at an election rally in Telangana. The Prime Minister questioned why Gandhi has stopped attacking businessmen ever since the Lok Sabha elections were announced. He also accused the Congress party of taking black money to fund its election campaign. In response, Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi hit back at the Prime Minister at a rally in Amici. इन्होंने अंबानी अडानी को गाली देना बंद कर दिया मैं आज तेलंगाना की धरती से पूछना चाहता हूं जरा ये साझा दे घोषित करें कि इस चुनाव में ये अंबानी अडानी से कितना माल उठाया है काले धन के कितने बोरे भर करके रुपये मारे हैं क्या टेम्पो भर करके नोटे कांग्रेस के लिए पहुंची है क्या क्या सौदा हुआ है आपने रातों रात अबा अंबानी अडानी इनको गाली देना बंद कर दिया जरूर दाल में कुछ काला है पांच साल तक अंबानी अदानी को गाली दी और रातों रात गालियां बंद हो गई मतलब कोई न कोई चोरी का माल टेम्पो भर भर करके आपने पाया है 
मिथिला राज ये जवाब देना पड़ेगा देश को मैं उस पर टिप्पणी नहीं करूंगी कि वो शहजादे कहते हैं मेरे मेरे भाई को खुद तो शाहिनशाह हैं लेकिन वो छोड़िए लेकिन बहुत सफाई दे रहे हैं आपने सोचा है क्यों दे रहे हैं देश की पूरी संपत्ति पकड़ा दी है इन खरबपत्तियों को देश देख रहा है देश समझ रहा है हवाई अड्डे बंदरगाह सड़कें आप नाम लीजिए कोयला मैं वहाँ गई छत्तीसगढ़ में प्रचार करने के लिए कोयले के खदान इन खरब पत्तियों को पकड़ा दिए हैं अब देश समझने लगा है अगर कोई सिर्फ अपनी छवि के बल पर जनता के सामने जाता है और उस छवि के अलावा कुछ गहराई नहीं है तो एक दिन तो आएगा ना जब जनता समझेगी कि ये तो सिर्फ छवि थी असलियत क्या है अब वो दिन आ रहा है जब वो दिन आ रहा है तो घबराहट हो रही है घबराहट हो रही है तो सफाई दे रहे हैं Well, Priyanka Gandhi there responding to the Prime Minister's attack. The Google Wallet has come to India. The company says the digital wallet will allow users to store airline boarding passes, travel tickets, movie tickets and more. Ashmi joins us now to take us through what's on offer and what's special, if anything, Ashmi. Well, Google wallets have gone online as far as India is concerned. Now, Google is pitching this as a one-stop shop uh, for all your digital essential needs. So, whether if you're traveling, your boarding passes, uh, a movie ticket, uh, even doubling up as a car key, these digital assets can be stored together on the Google wallet. That's what it seeks to do. Uh, we spoke to the leadership earlier today. In terms of use cases, what they're telling us is that on booking a flight, the boarding pass, the digital version of that, can be available on the application. For going for a movie, it can be made available uh, for. public transport they've already tied up with kochi and hyderabad airport uh, in it will it is also uh, they're hoping this uh, doubles up as a corporate badge as well in terms of scanning at the time of entrance to the office also partnering with bmw to in fact uh, doubling this up uh, as a car key as well uh, now they've partnered with companies such as bmw air india make my trip uh, pvr uh, the total number of partners so far is at 20 but they're hoping to build that number over the next uh, few months uh, but an important clarity here what, what What is, what is it not? Uh, it is not a super app. Uh, it does not allow for the function of uh, users to book their tickets. There is no booking option available as a part of this application. It is also not uh, Google's version of a digi locker. So don't expect your Aadhaar or your passport details to be stored on the application. That is not the function of the application. Uh, there is also no payment link involved. Google is clarifying this is a non-pay digital assets application that is being provided to the users based on feedback uh, that they receive from. various users in terms of challenges going forward well the number of uh, partners which is currently at 20 that will need to be uh, hauled up significantly that's a challenge going forward another challenge could also be competition from similarly placed applications such as the apple wallet or the samsung wallet which also have uh, the payment options available with them uh, these are some of the challenges that the management said that they will be coping with going forward but clearly the latest offering google wallet now available for indian users the main benefit is you know leave your wallet at home your physical wallet is what i mean uh, you know we're adding a whole bunch of categories that essentially what used to be sort of paper driven categories whether it's like movie tickets or boarding passes we have an amazing app in india called google pay right that does payments and i use it like several times a day my family uses it several times a day and lot of our focus is you know is to worry about the non payment use cases that are talked about today Well, from the Google Wallet to what's latest from Apple, the company's unveiled a new range of tablets at an event in London. Shibani is here with more. Shibani, what's new? Apple today unveiled the new iPad Pro in stunningly thin and light design. We got to do a hands-on with these devices. Now, first, the 11-inch model is just 5.3 mm thin. Uh, the 13-inch is even, in fact. You know, at 5.1 mm, it comes in two different sizes, as I mentioned, 13 and 11. For the first time, the Pro model comes in two sizes. Now, both the sizes feature a new breakthrough Ultra Retina XDR display with tandem OLED technology. OLED was something that was highly speculated over the past couple of uh, weeks for the iPad Pro. Now, both these devices are powered by a powerful M4 chip. uh the versatility and advanced capabilities of the pro devices uh is in fact further going to get enhanced with its accessories especially the apple pencil pro brings powerful interactions uh, and experiences in fact to the pro devices of course there are features like squeeze barrel roll haptic feedback 
uh, that makes marking up, creating an art piece even more intuitive than ever. Uh, then there is the magic keyboard which is also packed with some incredible features and has gotten thinner. Now iPad Pro in itself has an updated camera system this time with rich audio from four studio quality mics. Also the back camera. Uh, Apple promises is going to capture some vibrant images and videos with improved textures is what Apple is promising on the new iPad Pro. Then the front camera, the orientation of the front camera has been moved to landscape orientation. Now a lot of us take our zoom calls, video calls on iPads. So that makes you know those video conferencing uh, like extremely easy and especially if you mount it on a keyboard or a smart folio. Now the 13 inch and 11 inch uh, iPad Pro will be available in silver and Space black finishes in four different configurations starting 256 GB that goes up to 2 TB. The base variant, the Wi Fi only variant of 11 inch iPad Pro, is available at 99,990 rupees on apple.com starting today, but in stores it is available from May 15th. All right, uh, Shivani, many thanks for joining us. So if you are an Apple enthusiast and you're looking to upgrade, well, Shivani is giving you the details of what's on offer. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Business 360. The news will continue here on CNBC TV 18. Stay right there. We're back in a moment with more.